Good afternoon and good morning. Thank you for joining us, everyone. We are here today for our workshop entitled Human Centered Design, Leading Engagement for Tribal Child Support. We're so excited to have you joining us for this session today during the ACF Indigenous Programs Conference. I hope you were able to participate in the plenary earlier today. It was very moving and powerful. And this has been a wonderful virtual conference so far. My name is Melissa Johnson. I am the director for the Division of Regional Operations in the Federal Office of Child Support Enforcement. I'll be facilitating and speaking briefly during today's presentation. We'll also be joined in the presentation today by Andrew Pfeiffer. Andrew is a writer editor in the Division of Customer Communications with OCSE, the Office of Child Support Enforcement. Sandy Clower from Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians is also gonna be joining. She is the division director for our, the child support program there. Dana Huckabee is the region six program manager for OCSE and she's also going to be joining as well as Allison Lastly, who's the director of tribal child support services for the Sac and Fox tribe of Mississippi and Iowa. Kimberly Curtis is the director for the division of program innovation for the office of child support enforcement. And Danita Herrera is gonna bring it home for us. Danita is the judicial director for the Klamath Tribes Judiciary. We are so thrilled to have all of them joining us today. Before we begin, we will have some instructions on how you can interact with us during this session. I'm gonna turn it over to our room monitor, Taylor Hodges for that information. Thank you, Melissa. Good morning, everybody. Uh, good morning for me, afternoon for everybody else. Uh, my name is Taylor Hodges, and I'll be monitoring today. Uh, just a few small but important uh, items here. Please put your questions in the chat during this presentation. Um, I'll be make, you know, keeping close watch and taking note of all the questions slash comments, and we'll get to those at the end, especially because this is a multiple segment uh, presentation. We'll, we'll uh, collate all those questions and get to them at the end there. And then during the Q&A session, feel free to raise your hand on Zoom, there's a function built in. You can raise your hand, utilize that, and we'll uh, have you on for your question. And then finally, put a link in the chat here. Please participate and fill this survey out. It really helps um, us and the presenters and Melissa and everybody here. Um, feedback is extremely useful and we would really appreciate that. Um, and I'll provide the link again at the end for your benefit. Um, yeah. That would be very helpful. Thank you so much. And uh, thanks to Melissa and everybody for having me as the monitor today. Back to you. Thank you, Taylor. Thank you for those opening reminders and we'll get started with our workshop. So at OCSE, the Office of Child Support Enforcement, we are continuously working to improve our collaboration and our services that we provide to child support programs. One of the ways we've made these improvements is by embracing human-centered design. Human-centered design is based on a philosophy that empowers an individual or a team to design products, services, systems, and experiences that address the core needs of those who are experiencing the problem and using the system. This approach provides us with a new way to partner with our tribal child support directors to identify problems and gain insights and input on design, format, and delivery of potential solutions. In 2021, OCSE partnered with the University of Maryland's Academy for Innovation and Entrepreneurship. They joined to provide training and introduce the OCSE leadership team to human-centered design approaches. This resulted in a kickoff in September of a 12-week OCSE innovation program that started with a three-day virtual boot camp. The three OCSE teams were taught about design thinking, lean startup, and human-centered designs. They gained hands-on experience and learned the dynamic design process. Part of this process includes Empathy interviews, gaining empathy by focusing on who we're designing for and conducting stakeholder interviews, identifying the need and refining the project goals and scope, and prototyping and testing potential solutions with the end users and the beneficiaries. We were thrilled to have Lisa Skinnador, a former child support director from Oneida Nation and a past president of the National Tribal Child Support Association 
graciously join us during that training as a guest faculty to talk about cross-cultural communication as we went into these uh, empathy interviews. The OCSE teams in engaged in a design sprint and pitched, pitched their prototypes in December. The teams are here today to share about their projects and are joined by tribal child support directors that participated in this process and in the interviews. I'm gonna turn it over to Andrew to lead us through the first project. Thank you, Melissa. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Andrew Pfeiffer and our human center design team focused on tribes and communication. And we're excited to share our findings and prototype with you today. Next slide. When we first started this project, we thought we were improving the tribal section of our website to help parents. Our original opportunity statement was how we might help tribal parents receive and access information to better navigate the child support program. And we thought this would more or less be a straight line to our solution as we conducted the interviews and brainstormed. Next slide. However, as we were warned during our boot camp, our process took a lot of turns. Uh, we not only changed prototype ideas, but we made fundamental shifts in our opportunity statement that you'll hear about later. Next slide. We interviewed a variety of stakeholders, uh, six 4D directors, two tribal communication specialists, four of our own OCSE staffers, and two ANA staffers who directly provide technical assistance to tribes. Now we did not interview parents, but we were able to learn about some of their communication preferences through directors and specialists who interact with parents on a daily basis. Next slide. Now, before we reveal what we learned, I'd like to turn it over to Sandy Clower, 4D director of uh, the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians. Uh, Sandy and her colleague, Whitley Smith, were so generous with their time and feedback and were very, very appreciative. Um, and as I turn it over, I'll ask Sandy to please explain what she thought of the human-centered design process and this prototype. Sandy? Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, Andrew, uh, for the opportunity to come and talk about human-centered design. Um, here at Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians, we're located in the Great Smoky Mountains in Western North Carolina. Our reservation lies within five counties in Western North Carolina, very rugged terrain uh, in several of the areas and several of the counties. So we have, um, uh, are lacking, I should say, uh, internet connectivity to a lot of places. Our clients, our non-custodial parents, sometimes have no options at all to reach out and contact us other than by telephone. Um, we have not uh, been able, been very successful with doing text messages because again, we don't have that internet connectivity. So that has been a huge barrier for us. And we were real happy to share our ideas with Andrew and his team as to how we could better serve the individuals here at the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians. Um, several of the ideas that we tossed around and talked about with uh, Andrew and his team were uh, being able to do a fact sheet that we uh, would put out in our lobbies or that we could mail out with applications for our clients in order for them to know exactly what child support could do for them and how child support could assist in their families. Um, we also talked about uh, social media. Uh, a lot of our information, we have a social media page and we try to put all of our information out there that, that can be published, such as uh, court dates. And if we're having uh, special meetings in the office and we want to invite people to those, we do a Facebook uh, page and we, have, we put those kind of things out on that. But still that doesn't reach and doesn't answer individual questions. So for the uh, human centered design team to offer the suggestions that they have as to how they help, could help us, we were, we were very quick to be on board with that. So we thank you for that, Andrew. Great, thank you so much for that, Sandy. We appreciate that. 
Uh, next slide. Now, we learned a lot in a short amount of time, and here are just a few of the key highlights. One, tribal child support staff don't direct parents to the OCSE website, and they don't know that tribal parents visit our website. So we were originally focusing on the wrong problem because our website is not where tribal parents get their information. Also, tribal directors are best positioned to know what tribal parents need, um, both in type of the information and how that information is best disseminated. Also, budget is a major barrier for trial, tribal child support programs to overcome, especially in terms of communication. Elders and other influencers in the community have a lot of credibility in helping tribal programs communicate. And finally, Facebook is a huge way for many tribes to share information, especially during the pandemic. Now, there were some key takeaways that we were aware of and were validated through these interviews. Um, one is that all the tribes are different and unique in terms of customs and programs, uh, geography, and much more. And also, we all have a passion for ensuring that children's needs are being met. Next slide. Uh, next slide. Now, as I mentioned, our original problem statement changed as we had our conversations. We realized that instead of using the OCSE website to proactively communicate with parents, our place was helping tribal directors communicate with parents. So we landed on creating a work group that will help provide direction and feedback for OCSE created outreach materials that tribes can use. And these would be optional resources for tribes and not mandatory. And we think that this could be a positive solution because the work group would be a collaboration between OCSE and tribal programs. These materials that we develop would have um, tribal input, perspective, and approval. And the products that we develop would hopefully be utilized more because they have this tribal input. Ultimately, this solution could leverage OCSE resources and feedback from the tribes to develop materials that we hope tribes find useful. Next slide. And in our conversations, we did discuss some potential outreach materials that OCSE could create. We could create a Child Support 101 for parents that talks about the benefits and services offered by the program, and it would have blank spots for tribes to put their own logo and contact information. Some tribes expressed interest in refining existing or creating new employer outreach materials, and the work group could also collaborate on something like this. Um, but ultimately, as I said, the work group would provide the direction and feedback for the materials that we create, and we hope that it can help tribes in their outreach if they choose to use them. Um, and this was a great experience overall for our team, and we're looking forward to this project. And so with that, I will turn it over to um, our next presenter, Dana Huckabee. Good afternoon, everybody. <clears throat> I'm Dana Huckabee, and our project team was focused on the tribal plan amendment process. So much like Andrew, as we started the project, we were focused on a different route. Um, we looked at the, the tribal plan amendment process through the government lens. In the past, we had, we had developed some products and templates internally to meet our needs and what we thought would meet tribal needs. And through this human-centered design process, our path was to focus on the tribal director's point of view. Next slide, please. So as we went through this, um, we had to start with the child support tribal director experience, you know, their challenges, their experiences, their ideas, and their input. And as we engaged in those discussions, we realized plan amendments are not the priority in the day-to-day -day practice. So that led us to our opportunity statement. How might we help tribes to better serve their tribal parents and children through culturally appropriate services? Next slide, please. 
So through the process, we conducted our interviews with uh, tribal directors and um, staff from the regional offices. We were able to interview 10 directors and they had a range of tenure and experience. Next slide, please. Our lessons learned. So from our interviews, these were the things we heard specific to the Tribal 40 plan and plan amendment process. We heard consistently that tribes want input before OCSC makes any changes that impact their work. Uh, the one bullet I'm gonna elaborate on a little bit is the comprehensive application versus the plan. Just to give some context of the growth of the Tribal Child Support Program, in 1999, there were seven tribal nations that began operating child support programs under the interim rule. Um, in 2004, our final rule was released, and today we have 60 tribal nations operating child support programs with one in a startup phase. So in order to operate a program, a child support application is submitted, which we often refer to as the 40 plan. It's very large, some are 600 to 800 pages long, it's an all-encompassing uh, range of documents with personnel information, audit information, policy code, um, many documents that are required to be approved for funding to start a program. So we realized that we did have a disconnect at OCSC and we needed to clearly identify what is required in that plan moving forward compared to what the original uh, consolidated tribal application looked like. Next slide, please. And next slide. So as we um, interviewed the directors, uh, we heard they wanted a streamlined process. They only wanted to sum submit what is required and for the regions to be consistent. So what we have, have developed is a, a first draft of what this might look like. Uh, there's a table of contents that outlines um, the core requirements to operate a program. There are 14 of those. And then the 15th requirement around cooperative agreements. The cover page would be the agreement between the tribal program and OCSC that as a condition of funding, the tribe agrees to administer the program according to the federal requirements. There are um, attestation pages, uh, one page for each of the 15 requirements with reference to regulation on each page. Those plan pages provide, would provide um, an assurance that the tribe agrees to maintain those requirements. And for the majority of, those, of these plan pages, a program would only submit that page when a change occurs. Now within those 15 pages, there are four pages that would require some attachments. And this would clearly outline uh, when additional information would be submitted, such as organizational charts, tribal laws, codes and regulations, child support guidelines, and those cooperative agreements. And we also heard a suggestion that some tribes may want to submit their policy or other supplemental information, which would also be an option if tribes chose to do so. OCSC would continue to store the tribe's original comprehensive 40 application, but we wouldn't continue to maintain that large file. Um, next slide, please. So this initial draft does have a consistent format that is streamlined, organized, relationship-centered, transparent, flexible, all the while meeting the regulation. Moving forward, as I've said, this is our first draft. One of the suggestions during our interviews was to set up regional discussions so that all tribal directors have an opportunity for input. And at this point, we're currently holding those sessions. From those discussions, um, we're going to share the feedback at the next uh, National Child Support Director Association meeting in April. And from there, we also hope to um, ask for tribal director participation in a smaller work group to finalize and fine tune the process and the products. And um, next slide. Uh, now I do want to turn it over to Allison Lasley, who was, um, gracious, was a gracious participant in our interviews as well, and she can share her feedback and um, point of view on the process. Allison. Good afternoon, thank you. Thank you for allowing me to uh, the opportunity to, to speak about my experience working with the OCSC on the human centered design. I am in, uh, I support the human centered design because it gives tribes the opportunity to provide their input. I have to admit in the beginning, 
I looked at the opportunity statement and some of the information that you know they were at first requesting and, and it took them a couple of tries to get the language right. Because I was like, okay, let me let me see what they want. And it's the federal government and they want to help, right? And so if you've worked with Native Americans, American Indians for any length of time, you know that we do not trust the federal government very easily. So <clears throat> I reached out to my colleagues and I asked them if there was anything that they wanted me to share because I, I, had, I had a rock star team on, on, my, on the federal offices side. So I didn't really have any you know, huge issues that I needed to share. So I shared you know, some of the common themes that came up during our director's association meetings. And I thought about in the beginning how, you know, how we started, how we built our program, you know, how can we, some of the questions that we asked ourselves, how can we Nisquathiize this? How can we make this tribal? It's a heavy, heavily regulated federal program. You know, how do we reconcile the competing values of co collecting child support on, on behalf of states, you know, for state aid? And our culture, our language, and traditional practices need to be integrated into the programming because that's what makes it tribal and that's what makes it relevant to our people. As with many other federally funded programs, tribes have to find ways to make this ours, to engage our communities and to help our children. And I felt like at first I had to be guarded and, but, and I had to be honest. I knew that if we were ever going to make a difference, to improve programming, improve relationships, then we had to take that step forward. And they asked me, should OCSC take this approach on other projects? Of course. I mean, I've been the token Indian at several tables, several work groups, and it's been my experience that we need to be honest with each other about what we're working towards. And I do, I wanna be consulted when we start talking about the changes to rules and regulations. I wanna be at the table because I can tell you how that will impact my work. And I can tell you my understanding of what you just said. You know, are we, are we even on the same page? So communication is very, very important. And our relationships, our working relationships need to be trusting. And, and it gets very heavy sometimes, jumping through so many hoops. So I think we need to be genuine with each other. We need to have empathy and we need to respect each other. That was, that, those are my thoughts. Thank you. Thanks, Allison, we appreciate it. I'm gonna pass it to Kimberly Curtis, who's gonna talk about our next project. Thank you, Dana. So, um, our project focused on the uh, Section 1115 grants. And so for those of you that are unfamiliar, um, the Section 1115 uh, grant is a competitive grant and it has only recently been um, opened up to allow for the tribal child support programs to apply for some of these funds. Uh, and the grant is really focused on uh, innovative approaches to improving the child support program. So uh, next slide, please. Um, so before digging into the human centered design process, we had to develop a key question, which is how might we help our busy and often understaffed tribal 4D programs balance the administrative requirements of a section 1115 grant with the program implementation about which they care so much. Next slide, please. To help answer our question, we conducted 15 interviews with multiple stakeholders. We wanted to talk directly to tribal programs who would be affected by our proposed solution, but we also wanted to get feedback from those who had personal experiences working with them. Next slide, please. We learned uh, through our conversations that relationships are critical and as a result, we propose to increase the peer learning opportunities available to and with other tribal grantees through things like mentoring, tribal specific learning community calls, and sharing challenges and successes between tribal grantees. We heard the need to increase our presence at tribal events like conferences 
and to reinstate site visits, especially for new tribal grantees to ensure they have access to federal systems and that they have the tools they need to successfully manage their projects. Next slide and next slide. So our proposed solution is a comprehensive approach to building and enhancing capacity for tribal child support programs so that they may successfully plan for, apply, receive, and manage federal grant projects. Next slide. Our first solution involves creating a website toolkit with documents where tribal programs can go to find general information, such as resources for planning, strategizing, and managing a grant, grant requirements, the process for applying for a grant, and how the funding works. We will also provide templates and webinars on things such as what a successful application looks like, how to write a solid budget, and examples of well-designed evaluation reports. Next slide. And finally, for future 1115 funding opportunities, we plan to look for flexibilities in the application process and the evaluation requirements for tribal grantees that could help them successfully apply and evaluate their projects. And now I'd like to turn it over to Danita to share her experience with the human centered design process. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm excited to be here. Thank you. My experience with the human centered process was I was extremely surprised when Kimberly got a hold of me when they approached me and asked if we wanted to participate with this and give our feedback about our um, experience with the 1115 grant the application, the process, and the support. And yeah, so it was really good to be able to have our input. Like Allison said briefly a while ago, when we're able to input our thoughts and, and how we have our system set up and share that information, it is really beneficial to help the funders understand where we are as far as the tribal program and tribal systems. And about the 1115 grants, we didn't really know anything about the 1115 grants. And so we were extremely pleased to get it and nervous about how we um, managed it and everything. So, yeah, I think that's all I have. Thank you, Danita. And I should have I should have mentioned um, when I started that the 1115 grant has only, um, it has recently opened up for um, tribal child support programs to apply for those funds. And, um, and because of that, we've only had a, a, like a handful of uh, tribal uh, child support grantees. And so one of the things that we're really excited about with this project is the opportunity to um, provide more support to the tribal programs who may not have enough uh, or not enough, but may not have as much experience as the state programs have in, in managing an 1115 grant, but also to uh, build awareness and support for those tribal child support programs who have an interest in applying for some of these uh, grants. And so um, I, with that, I, I think I'll turn it back over to Melissa so that we can open it up for some questions. Thank you, Kimberly, and thank you to all of our presenters. I greatly appreciate you being here today and sharing your perspectives. We are now gonna open the floor for questions. If you could raise your Zoom hand or else share questions in the chat box, we would greatly appreciate it. I know Taylor is gonna be monitoring that chat box. So we'll give you a few minutes if you have questions that you might wanna ask. And in the meantime, I will put a link to the survey again and to the uh, ACF IPC website, just for everybody's benefit. Thank you, Taylor. While we're waiting for questions, I just wanna give a special thank you to Sandy and Allison and Danita for joining us today and sharing their thoughts about the process. Um, uh, 
your thought, your statements, uh, Alice, and are very true. And, and we understand that you uh, entered into this space for us to design and have these conversations with trepidation and, and, and um, distrust of the federal government. And we're aware of that. And, and uh, this is uh, our step to try to um, enhance that relationship and recognize the tribal sovereignty and how we can do better in the future. And we greatly appreciated you participating in the interviews, reviewing the prototypes, um, providing feedback on the prototypes, and even joining us here today to share your thoughts. Does not look like we have any questions in the chat or raised hands at this moment, but I'm uh, definitely willing to give it a little more time. Certainly. And I do have on the screen, um, there's an email address so that if after today's session, you have additional questions or want information, you can always send any questions or request for follow up to our tribal mailbox. Um, and we'll be happy to provide any information or answer any questions that you might have even after today's session. I'm not seeing any questions. I see some of our tribal child support directors that are on the participant list. Thank you for joining us today. Um, we hope you've uh, been able to join some of the regional meetings that Dana and her team have been having for more feedback on their project. And also hope that you noticed the call for volunteers to participate in the work group with Andrew as we work to design collaboratively with you some of those resource materials. So thank you for joining us today. Well, I don't wanna make everyone stick around if we don't have any questions. Um, one last call for questions. You may put them in the chat or raise your Zoom hand if you would like to do that. While we're waiting for questions, I'd just like to say I greatly appreciated this workshop and um, anything to encourage tribal sovereignty and self-determination, It's that's the way to be. You know, that's why we're here. Hi, Allison, you're back. Hi, I just could let that go. Thank you, Taylor. And I think that we, we do, we need to have those conversations. These are, you know, courageous conversations and we need to, have an understanding on what that means to each tribe because everybody is is different you know and that's why we can't have these um that's why some tribes don't like the forms they don't like the cookie cutter approach we're all different and and in some cases it doesn't apply so i think we need to be respectful of that most of all 100 percent. yeah i mean uh, between not only between tribes and tribal organizations, but between people, like you said, everybody has a different um, understanding and a different, you know, they want to approach it differently. Alaska's uh, tribes and tribal corporations are so much different than the lower 48. And I'm not an expert or, you know, speaking on their behalf, but I know the perspectives are different and we, we got to hear those. I don't think we have to be experts, you know, on the laws. I think we, we get it. There's an indigenous knowing, and we need to trust that. We need yep. to listen to that, and we need to convey that to our partners, our federal partners. And I look forward to this, to more of these types of conversations. Yep. And I'm glad Melissa's in the position she's in because I know she's open. Oh, thank you for that, Allison. I'm excited about these conversations and I'm excited that we can have more of this engagement and open and honest communications and working together collaboratively for the future of the program and serving your families and communities. I know, Danita, you came back on camera. Did you have something else you wanted to add? 
I was I was going to add that um, as Allison said, each one of our tribal programs are different. And I know one simple example is that um, our chairman is listed as the administrative person, the authorized person, but he delegates to our grant and contract compliance officer the authority to sign our reports. And when I turned one in that was signed by her, um, I was told it wasn't complete because it wasn't signed by the chairman. And I think it's hard for the federal government or funding agencies to understand that our chairman is like the president of the United States for us having, you know, to wait in line or wait for them to authorize or sign something for us could take some time because that isn't always the priority with what's going on in our nations, our, you know, our governmental systems. And so I was able to express that during the human center design interview that how our systems are really different and it's hard for people to understand that. And it's not that I did not want to be in compliance <laughs> and it's not <laughs> that I hadn't completed my report because I had, um, and I wasn't really that worried about it because as many of you guys know, we have a lot of other projects that we're doing. And so unfortunately that 1115 fund grant wasn't the only grant that I had. You know, I probably have five or six other ones that I have to get reports in for or that I'm responsible for, along with supervising two very separate departments. So, yeah, I just wanted to share that. that that's a building, great example. Yeah, building those relationships, that's really important with your funding agency. Um, and since I was on, had this grant, I think we've had three different people in the position of of, I would say like a project officer, but you know, that, that position. So I would just get really comfortable with the person. And then I got introduced to the new person because that person moved on. So luckily we have Kimberly and I've been able to work with her and she's been great to work with. Thank you, Danita. And that was a great example about um, knowing the authorized official, because certainly um, your equivalent of the president is not going to deal with the minutia of signing everything that comes across for tribal business. So certainly recognizing that authorizing official is something that is very important. I appreciate that example. All right, last call for any other questions. Sandy, you're back. I am, I've been here all along. <laughs> oh, were you? Yay. Yes, I thought I you might have had to leave us. No, no, I, I, I jumped off. I just wanted to uh, echo what Allison and Danita said, that we embrace the opportunity to talk about our tribes and our culture. We're all different, but we're the same. Um, and we appreciate the opportunity anytime that we can to share those views with OCSE. So thank you for, for doing this for us. Thank you. And I look forward to many more opportunities to have similar conversations and engagement about uh, what we are moving forward with and what we want to implement at OCSE and how we can do that in a collaborative manner. Um, this is something that I, I really appreciated this human centered design and we certainly want to make that part of how we do business. Yes, um, yes. We appreciate all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sandy. Well, last call for questions. If we don't have any questions, I'll start wrapping up our workshop for the day and let you go a little bit early. I probably shouldn't have said that because then nobody wants to be the one to ask a question and keep everybody in class longer. Is that right? Well, again, I just want to say thank you to everyone who joined us today and participated. And thank you to our presenters. Um, I really appreciate you joining us today. And again, uh, human centered design is something that we really do want to make part of our business model going forward. And we appreciate the collaborative spirit and it couldn't be done without being willing to sit down and have honest conversations with everyone. So we look forward to more of those. As we get ready to depart today, I do wanna highlight um, the ACF Indigenous Program Conference website. I know Taylor put that in the chat a minute ago. Please feel free to explore that. Check out the, visit, the virtual exhibitor hall and um, you can find all of the next sessions on the agenda as well on the website. We thank you for joining us. Taylor probably will has in the chat as well, again, that survey link. Those surveys are really important for us as we 
gauge um, your interest in certain topics and also feedback for future conferences. So please uh, take the time to fill out that survey. We appreciate you being here today. Take care everyone and have a great afternoon. Thank you.